This video is going to be a look at a specific coverage variation that the Ravens use under Mike McDonald in 2022. And look, a lot of teams do some of the stuff that I'm going to show you, but this is one that I think had a lot of success in certain situations for the Ravens, particularly against the Bengals, when combined with some of the split field coverages the Ravens were doing from a too high safety look. It's a cover three variation with, with three deep, four under. So, so very typical in terms of the way things sort themselves out. At some point, you'll have players in certain parts of the field. However, the way the Ravens are doing it is somewhat unique. And I think the guy that's on your screen right now, Ty Bowser, is one of the reasons why they're able to do it. Patrick Queen, Roquan Smith as well. What I like, what I like about it is very subtle. I picked two examples of this here, and both of which produce a sack. So I'll show you the Ravens plays first. And then what I think I'm going to do is show you three other plays from other teams across the NFL and some differences in the coverage. This is a second and four against the Saints. That I still think could have been or should have been a forced fumble by Justin Houston. I think it was recovered by Calais Campbell. But in any case, it's a second and four. It ends up being a cover three. We'll pause it here for a moment. I'm not going to talk about the coverage now. I'll do this near the end for the Ravens. When we say cover three, typical cover three is, is four under and three deep with a four-man rush. And that's what you end up getting here. The Ravens are getting to that look from a different um, in a different avenue by blitzing Patrick Queen and dropping Tyus Bowser. Same exact coverage in the wildcard playoff game. Again, a second and four. A sack against Joe Burrow. Bringing Patrick Queen on an A-gap or B-gap blitz. Dropping Tyus Bowser out to the other side. It's a coverage that the Ravens used, or a, an element to the Ravens' coverage that they used even going back to the preseason. Bringing an inside linebacker from one side, dropping the outside linebacker from the other. I would say it's straight out of the Dick LeBeau uh, playbook from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Tyus Bowser plays a big role here. So does Patrick Queen. They're basically exchanging responsibilities in a typical cover three. I also like what they do with Roquan Smith. Talk about that a little bit more later. This is a very similar coverage to one where Robert Spillane had a pick six against the Ravens to open the game in Baltimore in 2020. Anyway, let me show you some of the different ways the teams get into cover three, uh, when they utilize it, and how they're doing it. So this first one for a different team is going to be the Bucks cover three against the Ravens, a bunch alignment. And look, Vita Ve beats Tyler Linderbaum for a sack here. This is early in the game before the Bucks D-line really got worn down. But in any case, it's a sack. The Ravens are in 13 personnel bunch. They're trying to take advantage of the, the base personnel look that the Bucks are giving. Three interior D linemen, one outside linebacker, another outside linebacker two inside linebackers and only four DBs. The Ravens are trying to take advantage of it. Somewhat typical coverage approach, if you ask me. The Bucks roll one of the safeties down to the passing strength because here's the bunch alignment. And then to the top side, of, and he takes the flats. You can see here in the cover three. And then to the other side, you've got an outside linebacker, number nine, covering the flats to the top side. Inside the coverage, this is the typical part of it or typical nature of it, you got two inside linebackers on the hash and then the middle of the field free safety. That's just your classic cover three. We would call it, you know, just just sky cover three down to the bunch side. Like I said, it ends up being a sack. Lamar really doesn't have time to find anyone open. Cover three, second and long, you know, gets a desired um, outcome for the Bucks. All right. Next play, cover three to trips. A third and seven this time. It's 11 personnel versus nickel. The Bucks run cover three again, but in a very different manner. Um, Lamar is able to, unable to connect with uh, James Prochet here at the end of the play. Let's look at how the Bucks get into the cover three. You remember on the last play, number nine dropped out into the flats. Two inside linebackers played on the hash. And then the safety to the passing strength, to the trips, which in this case would be this guy right here, he ran out into the flat. So that's how they got their four under delineation, two inside linebackers, one safety to the passing strength, and then an outside linebacker. Watch how they do it this time. This safety's coming down, and he's taking his mouthpiece out to communicate to, I think, Devin White to push out into the flats. So he's pushing him out into the flats, and now you, I understand that this safety is a little bit more shallow, but you've got your four under delineation here, your three deep, four man rush. You can see there is not any pressure in the beginning. Lamar's clearly looking for, I think, Andrews here over the top of this inside linebacker, and he just doesn't get to this route until too late. Uh, get to at least give Prochet a chance 
to catch it and try to get the first down. The the other inside linebacker that I you know didn't that I talked about briefly is out into the flats, not being targeted. And some teams do this, particularly like the Bengals. They'll put their inside linebacker out into the flats because there's less area to cover. They'll drop that safety down onto the hash. Presumably, someone who's more agile, more able to adapt and react to the quarterback, react to different routes. Lamar in this case just doesn't move off Andrews soon enough. Ends up being incomplete to Prochet. That's not the point of the of the player. You know, Prochet would have to catch the ball, possibly get the first down, maybe not. But sometimes that's the point of cover three to keep things in front. That's the reason why teams play this in certain situations. It's a third and seven. They're able to keep eyes on the quarterback, keep try to keep the ball in front. We don't take it. End up with extending the play and throwing an incomplete pass. All right. The point of those two plays was to show one team, the Bucks, running cover three in two very different manners. Now, this is a somewhat similar situation to the, the second play I showed you, or the second one from the Bucks. It's a third and, I think, 11. And the Buck, or the Bears have run the inside linebacker out to the flats. This safety isn't really spinning down. He's just dropping down to the, the yard to gain, to the sticks, which I believe is the 49. It ends up looking like cover three once we get deep enough here, but Robert Quinn destroys the left tackle for... The Bucks, or excuse me, for, for Green Bay. But you can see the four under delineation, even though it's not as heavy, a uh, it's not as distinct a difference between the underneath guys and the deep droppers, which I would say is these two guys here and this corner here. I'll let it play one more time, and you'll see how they cover up the uh, smash concept easily out of the cover three. Focus for me is that the last two plays that I've shown you, they're pushing the inside linebacker out to the flats. How the Bears play this this time, you get a vertical, you get a stop, and there's your smash concept to the bottom, and the Bears match it perfectly out of their cover three. Here we want it a little bit, sorry. You can see that the strong safety who's in the, in the flats is able to deal with this tight end route. There's no time for Aaron Rodgers to get the ball out anyway, and then the deeper route by Lazard is being covered up by this corner. So it's a good coverage to keep things in front. And when you can play it in multiple ways, I think it becomes exponentially more powerful, exponentially more effective. All right, let's move to the way that the Ravens do it, this particular version of cover three. Like I said, this is a second and four against the Saints. Ends up being a sack. You got Queen, Bowser, and Roquan Smith, to me, are on a string, like a domino effect. So I'll draw it up here for a moment because I realize I didn't break it down in the beginning. So what's going to happen is Queen is going to come on a blitz and then that gives Justin Houston, you know, outside rush lane to work with. Bowser consequently is going to drop to the hash and he's going to take over this pass drop, the hash area. So the, the, when I say it's like a, they're on a string, since Queen is blitzing, Roquan takes over his pass drop, dropping out to this hash over here. The combination of that with Bowser Playing the hash right there, to me, gives the quarterback that extra split second where he's got to confirm where people are going. Uh, to me, this is straight out of the Dick LeBeau playbook, the way they played cover three for years. One of the variations of it, at least. Look, you can't run cover three all the time in the NFL or college football or even high school. Don't get me wrong. Clark is dropping down from a two safety, too high look here. You got your four under. Bowser, Hamilton. And then your three deep. There, you can't play it all the time, but when you can do it from different platforms, your nickel, your base, and Tyus Bowser, to me, is the key. He's a guy who can drop to inside linebacker. He's a guy who can drop to the flats. The reason why I became aware of these plays, or acutely aware, is because I was doing a Tyus Bowser video, which I'll try to link up here in the top right for you guys if you want to check it out. just shows some of his plays, particularly from the wild card loss to the Bengals last year to end the season. And, and these were two plays that stuck out to me, where he basically was able to help the Ravens defense put a little bit of doubt in the quarterback's mind. I think the quarterback was looking here initially for whatever reason, unable to find anything. No routes were adjusted by any of the receivers or tight ends. Clark and Roquan have this one bracketed. Bowser perfectly on the hash. Hamilton perfectly in the, in the flat at this point, kind of the curl flat. Great coverage, great adaptation. They started using this a lot in preseason. A lot of people noticed it. It's not that other teams don't do it. Look, there's a, a lot of teams that do it this way. I just feel like the people the Ravens are doing this with 
blitzing with queen. We used to call this sling, where basically you line up an inside linebacker on the right, and then you take over the pass drop on the left. But we didn't have a lot of success with the high school kids. And then this outside linebacker, Bowser, taking over Roquan Smith's pass drop since he erased or take, took over Queens. The, the combination of the people they're doing this with, if you ask me, makes it even more effective because they've just got, they've got the right players in the right places. I think that's my favorite element to the way the Ravens are doing this. This particular cover three variation is utilizing Roquan Smith to take over Patrick Queen's pass drop, Bowser to take over Roquan's, giving the quarterback that extra split second of processing that he has to go through. Another example of it from the wild card game. I already showed you this one, but I'll try to break it down now. Second and four, cover three. I think it's a split sack between JPP and uh, Broderick Washington. Now, this is a three-by-one formation, so it's a little different than the two-by-two two I showed you that the Saints were in. They got Jamar Chase backside, and then you got one, two, three receivers to the top side. As an aside, I think this is a fantastic job of Marcus Williams seeing two go in, which is two go in here, and then three stay in the block. So he just basically leaves Marlon man-to-man -man and goes and helps with the vertical by Jamar Chase. You get that same sling or, you know, that same those guys being on a string, whatever you want to call it, Queen, Roquan, and Bowser. And look, I mean, I understand that you have a five-yard rule in the NFL and people, you know, get upset. There should have been a penalty called. Watch the contact that's made by first Hamilton and then Bowser and then Roquan all on Boyd as he tries to get across the formation. Again, Clark is dropping to the curl flat. You've already had Hamilton make contact with Boyd. There's Bowser making contact with Boyd. Queen just basically destroys or overwhelms the running back to force Joe Burrow off his spot. Roquan takes over Boyd. And again, you got a nice job, if you ask me, great awareness by Marcus Williams. Getting depth to try to take away Chase's route, understanding where the threat's going to be. This is the 19th game, and... The Ravens were very smooth in executing this and all of their coverages. I think they played a beautiful game against the Bengals. Shame of it is, you know, they weren't able to come out of there with a win. This cover three, if you ask me, allows them to be physical. It allows Patrick Queen to be physical and play downhill. It allows Bowser, Hamilton, other guys to be physical with underneath routes. The Bengals, look, the Bengals could run the ball here. If it's 11 personnel against our nickel, they could maybe run the ball. But the overall effectiveness of, of this coverage the quarters, split field coverages, I think can't be understated. I've said it many times. I think the Ravens have a great platform and a great plan for defending this Bengals offense. Uh, the Bengals had eight drives in that game. Now, this is not a Bengals-Ravens video and isn't meant to uh, disrespect the Bengals because, you know, they damn near made the Super Bowl. But the reality is they had eight drives in that game. The wild card game, they averaged 4.3 yards per play. Only a total of 234 yards total. Now, Burrow was 23 of 32 passing overall, but only for 183 yards. Thankfully for the Bengals, they were 7 for 13 on third downs. But in my opinion, it's this coverage, the cover, excuse me, the coverage variability. You know, this cover three, sometimes playing man, some of the split field calls that forces Joe Burrow to, con or any quarterback for that matter, to confirm for an extra split second what coverage it is before deciding where to deliver the football. Burrow is exceptional at seeing things, recognizing them immediately, getting the ball out quick. I think Mike McDonald has changed the game in terms of the dynamic between the Ravens and the Bengals, and he's and he's and he's tipped it in the Ravens' defense favor. I think Tyus Bowser, and that's the reason why I put him here. I think Tyus Bowser is a bigger piece to this than a lot of people would give him credit. In some cases, that extra split second for any quarterback, not just Joe Burrow, is all the pass rush needs to get there and disrupt the entire play, like the, the two plays I showed you, one against the Saints and one against the Bengals. I think this version of cover three, and again, it's to me, is straight out of the Dick LeBeau playbook, but I recognize there was people who ran it before him. But as a Ravens fan, I used to see the Steelers run it two or three times a game, and that Spillane interception to open the 2020 game just sealed it for me. It's a pain for quarterbacks to have to worry about. And when you put this on film, that sometimes inside linebacker on the right will go cover the, the hash to the left, that in itself 
adds a little bit of pressure to the quarterback's decision making because when he sees the inside linebacker on the defense's left or the offense's right blitz it doesn't just mean oh i can go ahead and take the slant or the sit down route as a as a hot check because the inside linebacker on the other side might be in that area it's a a beautiful um, adaptation of cover three if you ask me maybe it was in the mike mcdonald playbook at michigan i'm not sure I just felt like uh, giving credit to where I became aware of it, let's put it that way, with the Steelers when I first started coaching and tried to implement it some with our kids in high school. It's more difficult to do. But in any case, let me know what you think of the video, what you think of the coverages the Ravens played all year long, and how you think this Cover 3 adaptation falls or fits into the mix of all the things the Ravens do from a too high safety platform. Appreciate you guys' time. If you enjoyed the video, please consider grabbing a link to it and sharing it on social media to help the video get more reach.